This video is part four of a multi-part series on these old voltage regulators that were used on Kohler engines in the mid-60s. For best results, watch the videos in order. In the last video, I cleaned the points and adjusted the second coil, the regulator coil. That completed the normal process I go through to test and set up one of these regulators. Now I want to talk about how the regulator works to control the charging system. This is the wiring diagram from my old Kohler service manual. It shows two drawings. The first one without a starter solenoid and the second one with the starter solenoid. Everything else in the drawing is the same. Everything I talk about should apply to both systems. I'm going to concentrate on the top picture because it's a little simpler. If you look at just the regulator in this picture, there's the F terminal, the BAT terminal, the L terminal, and the GEN terminal is represented in the drawing with the G. In all my testing, I never did anything with the L terminal. The L means lights or load, which is everything else on the engine or tractor that needs to be powered. In this picture, you can see it's the ignition system. To simplify this discussion, I'm going to eliminate that part so we don't have to look at it. We also don't need to know what size wire that is. Some tractors don't have an ammeter, so I'll take that out. Also, this is the only place that generator terminal is labeled as G, so I'm changing that to GEN so it matches everything else. I'm going to make this regulator bigger so I can add some graphics in there later. Down here at the starter generator, I want to see what's going on in there. So here's part of a graphic from some other service bulletin. I'll paste that in there. And I'm used to saying starter generator instead of motor generator, so I'm going to change that part too. Now I want to bring in my cheat sheet next to this drawing. Remember on that first coil with the normally open contacts, I connected my ohm meter to the BAT and the GEN terminals. So in this drawing, you can imagine the open contacts right there between the BAT and the GEN terminals. They're controlled by the first coil, the cutout relay. On the second coil with the normally closed contacts, I connected my ohm meter to the F terminal and the chassis ground. So in this drawing, you can imagine the closed contacts right there between the F terminal and ground. They're controlled by the second coil, the current voltage regulator. So, why do we have a cutout relay? In the drawing, if the cutout relay contacts are closed, it connects the A terminal on the starter generator to the battery. The yellow line shows the current path when those points are closed. Notice on this end, the current goes through the starter windings, then through the armature to get the ground in the starter generator. That A terminal is where voltage is produced when the engine's running to charge the battery. If the engine's not running, that needs to be disconnected from the battery, or current will feed back through the windings and cause problems. If this was a generator only, you would drain the battery because current would pass through the armature windings to ground. But this is not a generator, it's a starter generator. So that's totally different because that A terminal that charges the battery when the engine's running is the same A terminal that runs the starter motor when you press the start switch. See that? If the points are closed, the A terminal is connected to the battery. And if the start button is pressed, 
the A terminal is connected to the battery. So in a starter generator system, it's critical for that contact to remain open whenever the engine's not running. That's why I check old regulators on the bench before putting them on a tractor. If that coil is adjusted to close at too low of a voltage, or just sticks closed for some reason, your starter will keep turning the engine until you can disconnect the battery. So you can imagine those points getting burned, pulling enough current through there to run the starter and keep the engine turning. In review, the job of the cutout relay is to connect the starter generator to the battery when the engine's running so it can charge the battery. And also to disconnect the starter generator from the battery when the engine's not running so the starter motor don't run. Okay, why do we have a current voltage regulator coil? If the generator's not providing enough power, the contacts will be closed, connecting the field coil to ground, and that makes more power come out of the armature. If the generator is providing too much power, the contacts will open, disconnecting the field coil from ground, and that makes less power come out of the armature. In operation, those points will be constantly vibrating to keep the voltage in the proper range. When you turn the engine off, the starter generator will stop turning, and when the voltage at the A terminal drops low enough, the cutout relay contacts will open, disconnecting the battery from the starter generator. Remember, when the engine's running, the cutout relay coil and the current voltage regulator coil both get their power directly from the A terminal, not the battery. That's why, when I was bench testing in the first three videos of this series, I connected my power source to the GEN terminal of the regulator. Okay, that's it for the pictures. I'm going out to the garage and adjust a regulator on a tractor while it's running. You're looking at a wheel horse that I use for yard work. It's an 8 horsepower Kohler with a starter generator. This regulator works good already. I'm going to remove it for this demonstration. Here's the regulator I want to use now. It's not the same one I set up in the previous videos because I need one with this curved mount to use on this starter generator. I have some longer wires attached to it, and I'm going to set it up here on these rags to insulate it from vibration when the engine's running. I just checked it on the table and adjusted it the same way I did the one in the previous videos. I have an alligator clip to ground the case with and I'll connect the other end of this bolt down here. Now I need this wire to connect to the BAT terminal and it's barely long enough to reach. I'll have to move the regulator forward a little. I have two wires left here. This one powers the lights, so I can leave it hang down on this side for now. This one runs the starter solenoid, so I have to get power to it. I'll use another alligator clip lead. and it'll connect to this L-terminal on the regulator to get some power. I have the voltmeter connected to the battery. The voltage is high because I had the charger on the battery this morning. 
probably shouldn't have done that. I'm going to start the engine and see what happens. going up slowly. I'll give it some more gas. Now it's going up faster. If I slow down the engine, the voltage comes down some. That's normal. I'll let it run for a while and see what happens. It's going up steadily. book says to run it for 15 minutes to let the temperature stabilize before you call it good. I've seen enough to call it good for this test. I'm going to stop there and move on to the next step in my demonstration. I'm going to mount this regulator on the starter generator and see if it still works. I can use the same wires that I had on here for the first part of the test, but I can eliminate the alligator clip leads. Here we go. It's about 12 and a half volts at lower RPM. I'll give it some gas and it should be charging. I'll rev it up a bit more to make sure. It don't look like anything's happening. And when it don't change after letting off the gas, you can tell it's not working. I'm going to turn the screw a little bit clockwise and put the cover back on. That didn't do anything yet. I'll turn it up a bit more. That didn't work yet. I'll turn it up a bit more. Now something's changing. It's somewhat erratic because that vibration's messing with it. I'd like to see it stop around 13 and a half volts. Now 
That looks pretty good. It's changing a lot. I'm going to turn it up a tiny bit. That didn't change it much. I'm going to put the screws in and make sure it works. That's not working anymore. So that's because I put the screws in. I'm going to turn it up again. And from now on I have to screw the cover down each time. That's not enough yet. I'm going to turn it up again. I saw it get to 14 volts. I'm going to turn it back down a little bit. I saw it bounce to 13.6 and 13.8, but it stabilized and stayed lower after that, so that's good. 
And that's where I'd leave it. Alright, that's it.